evening and welcome. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of these proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Today is August 6th time, 6 o'clock. This is the meeting of the Pembroke Board of Health. First on our agenda tonight, we have James Watt uh, as in regards to well drilling regulations. Evening, Mr. Watt. Good evening. This is, Mr. Of the, of the board. this is uh, Mr. Fine and I'm Mr. Newman. Mm -hmm. um, we're here just to listen to you tonight mm -hmm. uh, in regards to uh, you spoke to our office and like to speak to us about regulations in regards to wells in people's yards. Is that what you're here for? Yes, sir. Okay. That's Asian wells. All right. Uh, the town of Pembroke hasn't kept up with some of the other towns, and I've noticed that some of the well casing is below grade, creating problems. Uh, in fact, there's one right down the street here that I just looked at the other day, and it's uh, about 15 inches below grade. And as you well know, or if you don't know, well caps have breathers on the bottom of them. And if they're under the ground, pesticides, herbicides, nicotine, it's used in some of the pesticides, mix them with the water and it's going to get into the well. If it gets into the well and the static water level gets pumped down, naturally it's going to go wherever and could pollute somebody else's well. Hingham, Situate, Norwell, Middleborough, everything has got to be 12 inches above the grade, which protects the consumer, it protects the equipment and the environment. This, I, well, I drilled 50 wells last year in, in this close, uh, this proximity in all these surrounding towns, and I leave everything 12 inches above the grade, and it's the right thing to do. To allow it, uh, it's just not, it's just not the right thing to do. I'd like to see the board change the regs and supersede the state and make it 12 inches above the, uh, the finished grade. <clears throat> Mr. Watt, if I may ask a question? The, you referenced one well that was below grade. Mm -hmm. uh, if a consumer had that type of well and that well now became non-compliant, what would your estimated, and I understand that each site is different, but if you had to give a rough estimated cost, what would be the estimated cost of retrofitting or upgrading that well to become compliant? Probably four or five hundred dollars. Okay, so we're not talking any exorbitant amount. No, no, you'd, you'd weld on a piece of casing and okay. bring it above grade. In the state of New Hampshire, if you don't, it's a $2,000 fine. First offense is a thousand bucks. I'm almost ashamed to be a well driller in Massachusetts to watch what they're doing. I, as you all realize, it's the most precious resource we have. And if we don't protect it, we're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be drinking water that's not suitable. Here in this town here, you have to have it drinkable. It has to be portable, all right? You test that well down the street, it's not portable anymore. How many wells, if you had to ballpark or estimate or take an educated guess, would that, that be like that? After, I've been doing this 48 years. Yes. Who the hell knows? A couple of hundred, okay. probably. Okay. No, I just was looking for an estimated guess. You're, you're most the of Norwell have brought most of them all up. Mm -hmm. They have taken it out of their regs, and Brian Flynn, him and I uh, discussed it. we say what kind of discussion we had, but anyway, they're supposed to put it back in. Susan Sani in Hingham has done a very good job. If you go online and take a look at what the town of Hingham has done, that's where you should be. Situate is following suit, and so is in Cohasset. Middleborough has done this uh, 35 years ago. And I want to be specific. This is in regard to artesian wells. Do you mind just, there's a lot of folks at home that don't understand the difference. Could you explain, explain the difference between an artesian well and other types of wells, if you don't mind? Between unconsolidated material and consolidated, an artesian well is the, it, the unconsolidated material is cased out mm -hmm. with steel casing, 17 pounds, schedule 40, mm -hmm. and into the bedrock. And there's another situation, sometimes not far enough around here. Hingham is required uh, 15 feet. Mm -hmm. If it's soft rock, you go to 20, 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So it's in the core of the earth, the mm -hmm. bedrock. A shallow well is a screen well, two-inch point well that's an unconsolidated material, sand and gravel, 
uh, gravel pack wells, some of the towns have that. And that also is another problem, uh, you know, when you don't have the right distance. But I'm more concerned with artesian wells. Sure, because of their porous in nature being more easily contaminated by surface contaminants? Well, we've had situations where I've had an argument with some of the health officers and when we tried to get some of this done in some of the other towns, that wells are not tied together. And I said, don't tell me that. <laughs> We were fracking a well in Weymouth in TikTok Lane, and somebody lived down at the end of the road, drove up and asked us what we were doing. And I said, well, we drilled this well, and it doesn't make enough water. The customer's a little upset, so we're going to hydrofrack it to get more. He says, well, since you've been here this morning, my well is all discolored. And he was quite a distance away. So they are tied together. So that's what I'm worried about. You could pollute a well in the town of Pembroke by pesticides and herbicides, it gets into the bedrock, it could go to Connecticut in, in, in uh, pollute a well. And so if we raise the case, we're going we're gonna, to uh, eliminate 95% of that. It would, it would be a tremendous help for the groundwater, bedrock water. So the town, the town of Pembroke can supersede the state law at any time. And most of the towns have. Uh, Lakeville just went from 8 inches to 12, so they just drilled a well down here. And of course, I can take you around Pembroke, all the wells that I've drilled, and they're all 12 inches above the grade. I will not, if they want me to cut it off, uh, I'll just, I won't. And I, I usually tell them it's against the law. It's against the Jim Watt law. I'm not cutting it. Now what made you come before us? Um, I mean, you obviously this is what you do for a living, but well, it, did something my concern age now, you? I'm not going to yeah. make any money on it. I'm what I, I'd like to see it done because it's the good, it's the right thing to do, and it protects the environment. We have building inspectors, wiring inspectors, uh, plumbing inspectors, but nobody inspects water. I have. You can't believe the number of wells that you, uh, when people are passing papers, don't pass. They don't chlorinate them, they don't take care of them. But that's, that's people for you. But I think that uh, by doing some of these things, it eliminates some of the problems that we have. I mean, if you have a real good well, you should take care of it. Even if you're using it for irrigation. Someday you may have to use it for something else. Right now, so Mike, so we, when you when you're talking wells, but so say I have a friend that gets a well and they drill 200 feet down to, to get water, mm -hmm. and he has a beautiful lawn, and he, he puts a sprinkler system in. So what kind of well is that versus artesian? So well, you're talking about a shallow well, a two-inch uh, point screen well, or a four-inch well, which is a PVC pipe with a stainless steel slotted screen on the end that's in unconsolidated material which is sand and gravel that the water is moving through. And you know, so, uh, well, Pembroke, I think, is pumping out of ponds, but the, uh, Hingham has gravel wells. I think Norwell's got some. And they have big, you know, good-sized wells that are gravel-packed. So if someone fertilizes their lawn, you're saying, you know, and that, that cover isn't up to 12 inches, that, that that fertilizer can get into the water? It's going to get into the water. Of a neighbor or Well, any? another thing it's going to do, it's going to vacuum lock the well. Because the well has to breathe. That's why those, uh, they're as big as a, a quarter. They're brass screens on the bottom of the well. Because if you draw the water down with a submersible pump and then put something over it where the air can't escape, the well can't recover. And very, you know, you, I mean, years ago they did a lot of this. I've, I've extended... In Norwell, I couldn't tell you how many I've done. Brought them up above grade. Do you have any questions for Mr. Fine? Yeah. How many, first of all, thank you for coming before the board. You made reference to a few towns, Hingham, Situate, Cohasset. Yeah. You talked about Lakeville. Of all the towns that you do work in with respect to wells, how many find themselves in a situation like a Cohasset as opposed to a Pembroke? Most of them have... Uh, laws that uh, supersede, oh God, Hingham, <laughs> they, use, they use the health department as a zoning board because of the distance. Now if you drill a well in Hingham for a portable 
per house for point of use. Portable drinking water, you have to be 250 feet. I understand, but my question was, how many towns are, are there more towns that you do work in that are more like Pembroke or more like a Norwell or a Hingham that you feel? Most of, most of them are 12 inches above the finished grade. Okay. So could we make sure that the members of the board receive a copy of what regulations we have in Pembroke? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Also, full disclosure, Mr. Chair, uh, and I've already made this aware to Mrs. Landy, I have had email issues with the Board of Health Office, and I have not received any email correspondence as of August 1st. So if there's anything that arises with Mr. Watt, or the rest of the evening, I may be a little behind the eight ball. Okay. Um, we'll work on that then. Yep. Uh, Lisa, do you have any questions? No, he's answered my questions already. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Board certification, excuse me. Yep. The town of Pembroke gets their water from wells, not surface water. They have gravel wells? Yes. Okay. About four of them. They have five, but one's not operating. All right, so they have uh, 24 inch or 36 inch gravel. Ah, uh, that's pad. a good question. Yeah. About the gravel, no, gravel pad. Uh, Barry Miller probably does most of the work from the ranch. So, if if the board decides to pursue this or look into this further, are you willing to make yourself available as what I would call a subject matter expert? Not a problem. If that was this law was all in effect already, I'd have Lisa go down and have that well case <laughs> raised immediately. But without a regulation, to it, it's unenforceable without regulation. Yeah. So well, in Middleborough, uh, I can't think of his name now. God, he, he was quite a guy. He was hard on me, but uh, he would enforce it no matter what. I think. If you ask the people to do it, they probably would. The, the owners of, of some of these places don't realize what's going on. They right. leave it up to whoever did the work. And it must have a problem down there because they get a big, they get a sand separator on it before it gets uh, to the variable frequency drive that they have down there. And uh, there's, another, there's another problem. You, if you look at the Hingham regs, you have to go 15 feet into a competent bedrock before you set your well case. Some of these guys are setting at three and four feet. Well, so with the new regulation, we'll just use Hingham as an example, were some of the older artesian wells grandfathered in? Do you know that? Or was every well artesian well? The, pro the, pro the problem is nobody does anything. I've turned a lot of stuff into uh, Bruce Catman. My stepfather used to be the chief of police at Hingham. My, my family comes from Hingham. I was born in Glasgow and raised in Hingham. And uh, we have fixed a lot of them. And a lot of them we have told to the health department and nothing was ever done. And uh, when people bury a well, they call you in January and they're out of water. How do you fix it? It's frozen. You can't even get at it. It's just not the right thing to do. for, for all concerned. I've been doing this for 48 years and I know what I'm talking about. My own well here in Pembroke, 12 inches above the grade. I did all the rules and regulations and regs for the town of Whitman. <laughs> and the old guy used to go out and measure me. He called me up one day and he said, Jim, you have to follow your own rules. I said, why? He said, one of the new houses only, is only sticking up about 8 inches. I had to go over there and weld a piece on. But, uh, it's, it's just the right thing to do it, so I'm just repeating myself, but I think that uh, if, if the, most of the towns get on board and, and so the well drillers know what the story is, they'll leave them up high and uh, we'll cut them off to 13, 14, 12 inches and, you know, and put the systems in. And when people are out of water, even if the irrigation system breaks down, there's no water, it's so much easier to service it. This one here, how do you get at the nuts and bolts? at the top of the, on the, in the well cap, when it's inside an eight inch piece of plastic pipe. I mean, whoever did that, I just don't, I can't imagine what they were thinking about. Uh, apparently, they weren't thinking about anything. So when I say it protects the consumer, it's gonna cost, the, you're gonna have to dig it all up. Now, if it's above grade, like this morning in Hingham, people out of water, it's above grade, take the top off, pull the pump, 
tomorrow I gotta replace it. Okay? So anyway, that's the story. Well, I think we need to look in, you know, and we can tell you is thank you for coming, mm -hmm. first of all, and, you know. Well, I can bring it to your attention, yeah. whatever you can do. We'll exactly, and we, it. you know, that's why we, we listen, intend to, you know, with, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at the regulations and, you know, we'll have you back just so that we can. Yeah, I can come back yeah. anytime. Okay, no good to know. And you are a Pembroke resident as well. Yeah, I've been living here now, what, uh, well, I moved the office, what, six and a half years ago from Rockland to here. Okay. I saw that nice piece of property, and I said, i got to get that. So we brought it. <laughs> nice day. Yeah. Right back in the woods. It's a nice town, isn't it? Yeah, so far, so good. Good. We've got a good health department, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we have a great health department, yes. Mr. Watt. Damn right. <laughs> uh, we abandon wells, and we tell them just exactly what we're doing, right? Yes. And that's the way I'd like to have everything. It's, it's just easier. Yeah. Besides, at my age, you don't work hard, you work smart. <laughs> That's why we're going to start work tomorrow about quarter to six. There you go. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always Mr. Water, pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you. So we'll probably need a uh, copy of the regulations and then figure it out from there. Yep. So good. good. Is this 615 here? <laughs> Come on up. How are you, folks? How you doing? Good evening. Evening. So I have met Nathan, and uh, what's your name? Robert. Robert, I'm um, Matt Robert Newman, Chairman, and Gary Fine. Nice you Gary. are, are you Robert Lane? Lane. Lane. Yep. And you're Nathan. Yes. Who is yes. Nathan? Right here. I see it. Who is he? Oh. Nathan, explain Nathan. to the board your involvement yeah. with this. So we'll, you can give Mr. Fine a little background on the um, situation, and we'll start with you, Nathan, and then um, we'll talk to you after. Sure. And, uh, We'll, we'll, we have several questions, and mm -hmm. we'll need you to answer them, and we'll figure it out from there, okay? Sure. So the property we're here to speak about tonight is 24 Forest, correct? Yes. Okay. So what is your involvement there? So my girlfriend is purchasing the property, and I was involved early on. with I, I knew the broker on the deal, and I knew uh, Mr. McGlone, and I had asked him about you know the septic system and moving forward, and he told me, you know, yeah, just, you know, he gave me a, the scoop that it needs a new septic and we're moving forward. So... Mr. McGlone was a Title V inspector? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, because he had just done the work and he had done jobs, I do building and we've been, we've conversed in the past, so we have a relationship. But I got Mr. Lane involved to help us close the deal in the house by providing the new septic, you know, in an accelerated speed. Everyone else was pretty busy, they couldn't get anyone in to close as early as they would like. So we were helping to rush to a closing and my involvement definitely didn't help the situation because all I did was kind of muck up the waters. How so? So I had asked Shane about, you know, I was like, this is what I want to do, I want to hire Bobby. He's like, he's like is he licensed? Bobby? Me? Yeah, Mr. Oh, Lane. Okay. And he's like, is he licensed? And I just, I said yes. and. You know, it's, it's up. You know, I guess I was under the impression that because the permit was here and ready, I didn't understand that a licensed installer had to come pick it up. So I kind of misled Bobby, saying we're good to go, we're ready. And uh, so I started the, you know, pulling him off track. So you backtracking a little because you're saying you, you actually messed it up but didn't you say that he you spoke to him and he said it was all set i spoke to shane and he said it was all set but what he meant was see it was my lack of understanding of the process so i was unaware that a licensed installer needs to go pick up the permit okay. so the permit was here and ready and i called the town hall and they said yep it's it's here and ready but that didn't mean do any work it meant you know an, install, an installer with a license and all that has to proceed. So it was, it was my lack of understanding. 
Any questions in regards to that part, Mr. Fine? No, you're doing fine, Mr. Okay. All right. So I'd just like to express that I know this now, so in no way could this ever happen again or, you know. So, and we want to make perfectly clear that this this had nothing to do with the, the homeowner who's... Correct. ...who had the home and, you know, it's, it has nothing, it was not their fault. No. At all. No. Okay. So, because the people, you know, people wondering, because a lot of people, we need to know, you need to know what the procedure is when, when this happens, because there's lots of septic systems being built and there's lots of new homes being bought and people buying and selling all the time. So, right. the, you know, this, this office, we have rules and regulations. Right. And you buy this home, whether you buy it or you flip it, or the person moving into it, they may, you know, be gone in a few years, but the town and this office, we have laws that we have to abide by. We have, you know, regulations. Right. And they need to be followed. Right. So you need to really think about that moving forward regardless. Right. Because uh, it, it's, it can, you, you've cost yourself a lot of time here. Right. That's number one. Right. So you need to be wary of that. Right. Mr. Lane. Yes. You're a septic installer, yes. correct? Yes. Are, are you familiar with the regulations in the town of Pembroke? With I've never worked in the town of Pembroke before. Where, what towns have you worked in? I worked in Plymouth, Carver, Kingston, Duxbury, uh, Hanson. Okay. Hanover. So all those, quite a few different towns. All those towns have a have a permit fee and installer license. Right. Okay. So, yeah. although Pembroke and any other town might be different might n not exactly be in some of the times you worked and you are yeah. familiar that there are regulations yes, okay. I am. and and Nathan yeah it, it sounds like to me you're, you're really taking the hit for this gentleman and and being the fall guy but uh, I, I see I, I see and I, I'm not forgive my language I'm not casting casting throwing stones mm -hmm. at you but I see you being complicit in this process I mean mm -hmm. clearly you're a septic installer and you've Maybe you haven't been to Pembroke before, but right. the process isn't dramatically different in other towns. Correct. Is that that's a fair statement? Yes, it okay. is. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, in echoing what Mr. Fine said, I mean, uh, first of all, this should have never happened. Correct. Okay, um, I mean, the engineer who you spoke of at the beginning of this, he, he submitted the, you know, the plans, and, you know, and it required a variance, and we, the board voted on the variance. So, you know, as I spoke to you, we have a lot, we have, right. the engineer gives us this and we have to, you know, he sends it to us and we look at it and we, we have to follow these rules. Right. So when he asked for the variance and then uh, a month later, you started on the project and then uh, you came in the office and, you know, filled out the application and, you know, and then you have to deal with banks as well and you need to have a certificate of compliance so there's a whole system that was not followed here and though you say you're not familiar you as the installer should know that mm -hmm. and uh, here on this board we feel strongly that um, not only did you hold up him you held up the people buying the houses regardless you should know the system and um, I believe, uh, you know, is he's almost taking the hit here for you? As no, Mr. it's Fine. definitely my fault for so not getting in. So we, we need to, number one, yeah. hear that from you, and number yep. two, um, we will not let you go uh, without the proper fines that are due I understand. to you, not to the homeowner, but I to you that. as the installer. And we will not you know, sign off on this until we uh, and give you this certificate of compliance until we have a few things taken care of. Sure. I and you need to know what you're up against as well for the fines. Okay. Um, so I wanted you to know this as well. Um, so it's important to know if the simple, you know, the old, the regular process and the, the way the fees go would have been, you know, fairly not too, ba not too bad with the total because you've already paid you know, Mr. Malone, the fees wouldn't have been too bad, uh, around $350, but, uh, you know, I think you're going to have to pay some fines to 
uh, because we you've said you know we don't allow that I understand in this that. town yeah. because you as an installer should have known. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chair, a couple yes. of questions. Sure. Uh, and Sheila, you might weigh in too if you could refresh my memory. Initially, this variance came before the board on the 25th of June. Correct. Yeah. Um, was either Mr. McGlone or any, either of these two gentlemen present when we discussed and granted that variance? No, they were not. Okay, so it none of the three a parties? But there was nobody here to speak on that, is that no. correct? Correct. Okay. So, Nathan, and I don't have your last name, I would call you Mr. Popolowski, but you can skip We'll go that. with Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you mentioned at the very beginning when you started talking that you, you made reference to knowing Shane. So, are you, and forgive my ignorance, are you in the business? No. So, uh, well, I do houses. You know, I mean, you I'm, I'm, a car houses. I'm a carpenter, I build, and Bobby and I work together on a couple of projects. Everything has always been, to me, super simple, but I'm also on the ignorant side of this, right? Where he's providing the, the whole service. And okay, but you're in the industry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Now, Mr. Newman, you just mentioned you made reference to a, a fee of, you said $350. I just want to break that number down so we're all talking about the same thing. There's a uh, the $200 permit fee. There's the $125, so $200 is the $125 installer's fee, which would then bring you up to $325. And then there's the test fee to get licensed in Pembroke, which is $350. Correct. So that's where, Mr. Chair, you came up with that. Yes. Okay, correct. So um, in scenarios that happen similar to this, you know, if, if every situation was different, there probably wouldn't be a need for Mr. Chair and myself, but every situation is unique. And, and, but in, in similar situations, when there isn't fine, fine involved, and, and these are what I'm thinking, and I'm going to share them with you, Mr. Newman, we normally double the fine of what the initial fee is. So when we have a test fee of $25, we would fine you $50. We would double the test fee of $25 double it to fifty dollars so the fifty dollars plus the twenty five becomes seventy five as opposed to twenty five. The installer's fee is hundred and twenty five dollars. The fine is uh, excuse me, doubling that as a fine would be two hundred and fifty dollars plus the one twenty five, which brings you to three hundred and seventy five dollars. The permit fee is two hundred dollars. If we were doubling that as a fine, and we have done this in the past, that would be a $400 fine on all three of those. So the fines that I'm proposing are $50, $250, and $400, bringing you to a total fine of $700, plus the initial fee of $25, the installer's fee of $125, and the permit fee of $350. So we're talking a normal App, the normal charge would have been $350 had you guys done what you should have done and on time and communicated with the office. The fine of $700 would bring it to $1,050. Sheila, once again, I'm going to ask for your... The, the, the yep. math might be a little math off, is but... Just a tiny but off, not much. much. 700 plus 350 is 1050 I think my math, if anything else, is pretty good. Am I off? Right, but... Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I was what? just going to say, the understand. You are correct, but the permit fee was paid. Correct, less $200, yeah. yes, which is what I have, $850. Correct. You are absolutely correct. As I usually am. Sorry. Um, so that's something that I'm considering, but I'm running that by you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you're correct in your math, and um, I... Uh, I would like to see that uh, fee uh, enforced as well, Mr. Fine. Okay. So, um, furthermore, if I might, Mr. Lane, and mm -hmm. again, I'm not trying to be a bad guy, but I understand. you should know better. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I clearly, I I understand that you haven't been in Pembroke before, and had had you been brand new at this and hadn't been in the community, I might be less. Um, I would like to propose, in addition to those fees, that. Um, 
you're prohibited from doing business in Pembroke for the next six months. Okay. Is that something you would agree to? I guess I have no choice. Well, you, I'm not the law. I understand. You have the choice. Um, also, to add to that, uh, we've had uh, some complaints be due from our town department due to the fact that the uh, sand has been left, the mounds of sand have now fallen into the street. Okay. And a, 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 you know, a cleanup is going to be required in order to uh, take care of all this. So I'd also like to add to that, Mr. Fine, that we would need, uh, and I, in good faith, uh, a check from you for $500 because that's what it would cost. And if you clean it up, we will give it back. We will not cash it. Okay. But I believe we need that because it's going to cost about that if we have the DPW clean it up. Okay. So we need to add it to that. And again, all this is not due to the homeowner and this office. It's due to the lack of communication. And you might be sorry, but it's something that, you know, hits you in your wallet as well as you know, we have to follow these laws. All right. And, yeah. uh, no, that's understood. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, could you please clarify the situation that you're describing with the DPW? Is there a problem? In yes. The, the, oh. They have called this office. You can ask um, this. Yeah. The, Are you looking to speak on that? No, Mrs. I'm just going to let, let you know that it, it is typical on, when working on a sloped condition on roadsides in the town of Pembroke where you're disturbing the earth to either silt sock or hay bale to prohibit sandy runoff into the streets. Um, this should have been a short-term project easily resolved and it might not have needed those precautions, but unfortunately the heavy rainfall we've experienced with a sandy and highly sloped soil right near the roadway has caused roadway washout onto the street where sand has traveled off the, the parcel that these gentlemen are working on and into the roadway and, and coating um, some of Forest Street. Under normal circumstances, we would hold whatever permitting and everything else until that was taken care of. In this circumstance, we understand the, the pressure that you gentlemen are under to produce a document to allow this house to go to closing. So we are giving you the option of leaving a deposit to take care of the problem should you not take care of it, or if you take care of the problem, your deposit will be returned to you. That is at the request of the Department of Public Works to ensure that their roadway stays, stays clean. Sure, I understand that. When would this have to be taken care of by? If they leave a deposit, they can take care of it when they'd like, but after 30 days, if it's not taken we'll care, of, taken the, care the, of, that the DPW yeah, will we'll take the it. cash and take Trust care me. of it themselves. We'll have it taken care of. Yeah, it, it, this is pretty typical language in other situations of, of all construction types that when someone has not taken care of a roadway runoff issue, um, the town will take a deposit and should it be taken care of, it's returned, and, and if in 30 days it's not, the town will take care of it for you. I understand. <coughs> Do you have much? What, do you have anything to add to that, either one of you? No, I'm sorry for the confusion and my screw up on the whole mess. To be honest with you, it's embarrassing, to say the least. Happens to all of us. Yeah, it shouldn't happen. Um, I had a lot going on in my life and <coughs> lack of communication with me and him and the engineer, and just it's my fault for not coming to see you guys. Well, you must have a good working relationship because I, 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 I applaud Nathan. I, yeah. I I wouldn't call you a fibber, but. I appreciate Nathan taking the hit hit for you. Well, he's he's helping me here. I'm you gonna know, tell you, there's not one dollar in this for me. I'm doing this to help him as a friend, as as an installer. So that's so the certificate of compliance has not been issued. It, it could not be issued, um, member Fine, because the permit was not taken out. I, as the agent, um, until this issue was resolved to the satisfaction of the board, would be unable to sign it as the procedures were not followed. The only time I can sign a certificate of compliance is when all the procedures are followed and the system is compliant, then of course I can go ahead by normal protocol to release, release that COC. I will say I have confirmed with Mr. McGlone, he agrees the system is installed as designed with the board stipulation, with the membranes and all the appropriate features. I was able to see the completed system. The work there seems to be completely satisfactory and perfectly in line with Mr. McGlone's plan. So. Fortunately or unfortunately, however we want to look at it, the, the only snafus here remain to be paperwork and communication rather than actual error in execution. So are we able to get the ball rolling on this, like starting tomorrow in terms if of these, most stuff? If these want. gentlemen want to leave the appropriate checks today, they can have the COC right now. If they do that, and if it pleases the board that the project... Okay. 
the, if the board is satisfied, we can we can meet these gentlemen's needs at this moment. If they have so, Mr. Fine, if they pay the fines, which we just uh, uh, <coughs> explained to them, and give this office a check, um, we can we can release because uh, every St stipulating that there stipulating is a vote of the board that that is appropriate. If that's yeah. the board's action, then yes, they will be compliant of the moment that they would would walk away from this room. So yes, all of those things could occur. So you would, know, in the next few minutes. Would we need that in the form of a motion so that is for the record or do we just um, Yes, you would make a motion to to carry out um, the following sanctions at 24 Forest Street in regards to the licensure of the installer and the, the fines and, and the withholdings for the street cleanup as stipulated by the board as well as if, if carried Mr. Fine's further stipulation of a six month suspension of license that would all that would all move forward. I'll I'm make sorry, would you like me to put that in the form of the motion? I apologize. Go ahead, if, if you like. So uh, if you could put that in the form of a motion it, for the record and yeah, then we would absolutely I understand. Uh, so it would begin with the fine which would be um, fines and licenses that would come to a total of $850 to be paid this evening to the board, a six-month suspension of said license for the town of Pembroke, furthermore, a $500 deposit for road cleanup to be returned after 30 days if the cleanup is complete, if not, uh, to be used and executed by the Department of Public Works. If it pleases the board, that would be the motion. I'd like to amend that motion that... that was stated by Ms. Cullity where she mentioned eight hundred and fifty dollars. I just want to be clear it's actually a thousand and fifty dollars less the two hundred dollars that is currently uh, being held in this office. For the net is the same, but I just want to restate that. That is clear for the record. So having heard that, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So motion carries. If you uh, see uh, our administrator out here and pay her those fines, uh, our um, health agent would uh, sign off on the COC and you'll be able to let the homeowner know as well. And please make sure you inform them that it's all taken care of. And I hope you have been up front with them as well as a learning lesson that this didn't, you know, didn't come from this board or from the town that it was <coughs> as long as they had full understanding of that what held the process up right. that we you know so that we uh, it doesn't happen in the future and you know they can move on with that what they need to do so sure thing. okay gentlemen thank you for thank coming you for in time. And thank you very much appreciate your time okay. thank you very much good luck Sorry. guys thank you and, thank you. and we hope to see you back in Pembroke again we will I mean that we will thank you good luck thank you guys yeah. thank, thank you very thank much. you sir thank you Nathan one. yeah you too The next um, on our agenda, uh, we have uh, two variances, Mr. Fine. I believe we have one, Mr. One, Chair. One, because one, yeah, I was going to say there's two yeah. on our agenda, but one has uh, since been um, rescheduled or canceled. I believe Sheila was at 22 Pondview. Um, that was withdrawn? Withdrawn. That's the word I was looking for. By Sorry. the homeowner. Withdrawn by the homeowner, which they have a right to, correct? Do you know why it was withdrawn? Um, the assessor has the building as a two-family. Two Apparently, at some point, somebody put an in-law on the back that wasn't caught by the engineer. Right. Uh, and it was not the homeowner. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 So if they want to keep it a two-family, they have to redesign the septic tank, the septic plan to incorporate two tanks. And the homeowner couldn't make a decision fast enough, so they wanted to withhold. So, so it may come back before the board. It may come back before the board as is, or it may come back changed. Understood. Okay. It's, All right. it's still a two bedroom house. Just... Thank you. So we have um, 62 Wampatuck. Yep. I've actually looked at this variance, Mr. Chair. It looks reasonably cut and dry. I don't know if you have need time to look at it, but I'm prepared to make a motion on the property. But that's 
Uh, no, I did read it. Um, if, you know, I, I'm just looking at the uh, actual picture of the house. But I was so. If you'd like to make a motion, uh, I would, Mr. Chair. On the property of 62 Wampatuck Street, I would like to make a motion to accept the variance, allow the bottom of the SAS to be 4.34 inches above the mot line as opposed to the five required feet, thereby avoiding a pump. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? So voted. And the variance is granted. Okay. Mrs. Cullity. Yes. Thank you for uh, uh, thank you for adding a little bit to the discussion with Mr. Watt on the wells. I'm, I'm sure you have a plethora of information on wells, and I do not. So I appreciate that. You're welcome, sir. And I want to be clear: I don't have the depth and knowledge that he does, because I certainly don't work anywhere other than Pembroke, and I don't have the multiple decades of experience with him that that he does with the. Uh, wells and regulations and such. Well, his knowledge is clear, so at least we know. If you do something that a, long, I think you're going to be pretty darn good at uh, it. Straight, well, straight talker, so we probably will His be able knowledge to and his passion yes. as well. Yes. Uh, next on, uh, we have the minutes, Mr. Fine. Have you had a chance to review them at all? I read them this morning. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything uh, you'd like to add? I do not. Okay. I've read them as well. So hearing that, these, uh, would you uh, take a motion for the minutes for, uh, from June 4th, 2018? Are you making a motion or are you looking I'm for a motion? So, I'm looking for a motion uh, for, for the minutes from June 4th. Regarding the minutes of June 4th, 2008, I would make a motion to accept as written. And I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Next, we have, I believe, the uh, health agents update. Mr. Ch excuse me, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yes. I think the uh, next Did item is the subcommittee for the plastic oh. bag ban for the health oh. agents report. He's correct. I'm going to fix my notes. Pardon me, Mr. Fine. For that. Pardon. Thank you. So I will, I will just present a very brief update. At our last Board of Health meeting, there was a vote two to one to form a plastic bag ban subcommittee. I have presently found two individuals, one is actually present in this room, who have expressed a strong interest in being part of the subcommittee. The, uh, the gentleman I'm speaking of has got a video camera a little bit to my left, Mr. Robert Adams. Uh, we also have Mr. Gordon Martin, who has expressed a strong interest in being part of the subcommittee, including myself. That makes for a total of three members. As uh, Health Agent Cullody and Mr. Thorne, who are also present in the room, they were also present where several weeks ago we had Mr. Sullivan and a, I'm, I'm calling it a, a, a group of neighbors, I think that was how he introduced himself, and they presented a bylaw that they were looking support from the Board of Health. Um, as I recall, one of our members who wasn't present tonight is against the plastic bag ban. And I don't mean to speak for you, but I, I got the impression that you were supportive of the bylaw as written. I was not in support of the bylaw as written, and I, and I was very clear about that. That being said, um, we had invited Mr. Sullivan and a member from his group to join our committee. So I've been holding two slots open, slots four and five. Um, in the past week I've been unable to reach Mr. Sullivan, so I really don't know the status of that. But um, I'm, I'm hoping we may hear from them in the near future regarding the board. And I, I just may, may say one additional thing. It's my understanding that the Board of Health, excuse me, it's my understanding that the Board of Selectmen later this evening are voting to consider an article to place on the warrant at our fall town meeting something to ban single-use plastic bags. I'm hoping when our meeting is over I'll be able to go over there. I really don't know if the folks, if the citizens petition that the Board of Selectmen are considering, if it's the same group of people who came before our board 
Um, I don't I don't really know that, but if we get out in time, I, I would encourage you, Mr. Chair, to attend that meeting as well. So that that's a little bit of a update in status, if you will. Okay. Now you um, in putting the um, you in putting the the subcommittee together, which is what you uh, you know what we voted at the last meeting. Yes, sir. Um, your main focus was going to be the by getting the people, but then also to address the bylaws. Is that what you were going to do, or? Uh, well, the whole purpose behind the subcommittee, Mr. Chair, was yeah. to have an article to present to at our spring town meeting. Uh, yeah, to have an article at our spring town meeting that the that the residents of Pembroke can get behind and support in in some type of a plastic bag ban bylaw. Some type of a yeah. bylaw that will ban plastic okay. bags. That is correct. Okay. Well, we'll have to um, see if those. We'll have to find out about that meeting and see what uh, what we have to do about the rest of the subcommittee. But Understood. that's the update you have right now. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? No, I just uh, hope you're able to continue and find two more members and. Um, you know, do some work on that. Thank you. And I thank you for the time you put into it. You're welcome. Uh, so, having said that, then um, we at uh, we have the report now, correct? Yes, I think we've covered the first topic of the report uh, pretty thoroughly uh, uh, earlier this evening. Yes. Um, Five Town Tobacco Collaborative, as the board voted, forgive me, Sheila, did we determine that was, oh, she did it. Somewhere in February, we voted to join a Five Town um, Tobacco Collaborative. We've now gotten up to speed, received funding, and held round uh, two of interviews for a director for the program. Um, this individual would then work with youth to um, perform check operations on our tobacco retailers and make sure they're compliant with Pembroke's regulations. They would do that in five other communities as well. Um, in addition to compliance check, they would also work to educate our re retailers and their staff on compliance, why compliance is important, providing them um, documentation and information about tobacco use, um, regulations, how to spot fake IDs and things of that nature. So my fingers are crossed that um, we're just waiting on reference checks on both of the candidates. Both of them were outstanding. I don't know which way the group will go as far as a hiring, but neither one of the two final candidates are anything less than outstanding and well capable of, of executing. And what will be nice is instead of the, the board remembers just, I don't know, about eight months ago the state came through and we did have, sadly, two non-compliant re retailers. The goal of this program would be to bring all retailers into compliance and embrace why it's important and assist them in, in getting that way. Um, next item being Wolves Den, uh, the site remains untouched. They have received final sign-off from the planning board. Um, but there is an opportunity, a 20-day appeal period, that if someone was dissatisfied with the decision of the planning board, they could still appeal. Um, it is still encouraged if this board members have questions about that process to reach out to the um, assistant to the planning board um, regarding that. Pembroke Hospital um, is thoroughly approved. They're planning on getting to work out there shortly. They could not give me an exact date, um, but the lead project um, lead uh, head of the project of install has already contacted this office to say they are beginning to move equipment and manpower to the area to begin that project. Plans did come in for 15 Columbia Road. Uh, it would appear from the application that the applicant is planning on replacing both fields out there. Uh, remind awesome. the board that there are two fields. Only one of them is clinically in failure. Um, I know that the engineer was speaking to the, to the owner um, regarding doing one field or both. I think the economics favored doing both at the same time for the economic savings, given that both those fields are of the same age. And that's the application we have in that's currently out for engineering oh, yeah. review. Um, Woodbine Avenue continues Could, to move. Hold, hold, oh, sorry, that's for a second. Yep. And, and I've been following Columbia Road. I, I yep. think it's great. I mean, it, it sounds like they're they're working very proactively and they want to get both fields done. Do you think they could be done by the end of the year? I mean. I would expect, unless there's a significant holdup. Okay. I would expect. Good. Thank you. No so problem. that's the area where they had one working one, but it was the... Uh, one out broke, and then one, they switched to the working yeah. one. The, the one operating, we knock on wood for everybody, 
uh, continues to seem to be operating without yeah. a flaw, but both of them are over 30 years of age, so I think that's probably what prompted the property owner to, do both. to deal this one, you know, one time. Yeah. Um, also economically, it's much less expensive to do two fields side by side than if the second field had an issue to bring someone back after the fact, it would be much more costly. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, Woodbine Avenue, the homeowner has been in touch, probably going to be working with Jay McPhee of McPhee Construction. Um, the estimate did come in high, so this homeowner too is assessing her situation and whether just fixing the tank is the appropriate course of the action, her septic system, while working appropriately other than the tank, um, is still has some age on it. And, and given the cost and getting equipment into her very, very tiny lot, being that high, she is also considering whether or not a much larger scale project would be more suited um, rather than spend this large sum of money to just deal with a small portion that if, if investing a little bit more, um, she has a net yield of a, of a whole new septic system. So she's got some financial um, discussions to have with Mr. McPhee as regarding the whole system um, mm -hmm. before she can make a decision to spend that amount of money on a small portion of it. Um, 92 Birch Street um, continues to be involvement from the mortgage holder. Um, the agent was told by the mortgage management company that the homeowners have walked away um, from the property. They are going to pursue remediation. They have asked permission to go into the home to begin remediation. Um, that permission was granted because, of course, even with a condemned property, an appropriate uh, remediation company is allowed to go in and clean it. Um, I reminded the bank that all necessary permits uh, would need to be taken out from the building department before that work continued. Um, would pond the, would, sampling? That, I'm would, sorry, would that also involve some type of inspection on your behalf to make sure that the dampness the, issue is actually when, when resolved? When the work is complete, um, but before they touch anything, obviously, uh, a building permit. Um, it, they're going to be presumably taking down drywall, um, going in and, and doing whatever they're going to do, so that's going to require a building permit first. Um, this board's involvement would only be when they are seeking to lift the condemnation that then they would invite me in to demonstrate yes. that the chronic okay. dampness has been thoroughly resolved. Um, but again, they can't even start that work without a building yep. permit. That's what I thought. Okay, so thank this, you. And at this property, so the procedure then when you, uh, what you just spoke of, so the bank comes in and they pay for the cleaners? The, and my the homeowners don't live there anymore. Exactly. Right? We don't have involvement beyond the property itself. Right. Who owns the property is not germane to the town, nor to the Board of Health, nor to the legal enforcement that we have of it. Our concern here at the Board of Health has to be strictly, there is a property at 92 Birch. It is not habitable as it stands. Whomever owns it is not cause for concern for this office, just yeah. the fact that it is restored to livable. Um, the matter of who owns it, who relinquished it, that's not a, a topic for this board, nor is uh, any of our concern. The condemnation stands until the circumstances that have rendered the home unoccupiable are remediated. Okay. So. Thank you. All the rest of that is, is for the courts and these individuals to decide. I feel bad for all those involved. Yeah. Um, the pond sampling's gone well. We had one very slim exceedance down at Stetson Pond. We retested right away, and it tested back low to 32. But when I say exceedance, we literally exceeded by four points. It was a very nominal amount to exceed on our bacteria count. Um, ponds are looking good. We did notice the return of some algae um, to Furnace and Oldham. Oldham is being retreated on Thursday. That public announcement, I believe, is going out today. The company just got the alum to retreat Oldham. Again, this is suppression of algae. We have not seen blue-green algae yet, but we are seeing actual algae. Um, so it was a cause for concern, because so the town has a contingency plan to treat the pond again. We've treated Oldham um, multiple times in, in, in years in the past, and unfortunately, all that hot, dry weather we had was just a wonderful soupy mix for algae. It gives them exactly what they want, which is tons of sun and a lot of stagnation of water, because without water flow, uh, it's pretty quiet, so that uh, created a not ideal mix for, for bathers and a great mix for algae. So that second treatment is going on on Thursday. Um, workload remains relatively normal for this time of year, not as crazy as the spring, but if you notice from the perk list, still really consistent and really in consistent with the uh, installations that we would normally see around this time of year. Does anyone have any questions or anything they'd like to know more about? Uh, just in the past, but the results usually get posted on the uh, 
website, correct? We've had some uh, actual, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. We've had some server issues here at Town Hall. I noticed uh, a couple board members have mentioned maybe not receiving things as timely. Um, we have had a, a server issue. I know the server wasn't working on Friday. We have sent things over um, to be posted to the website, so I wonder if there's some lag time there. Um, certainly, communications as normal have not been the norm of the last couple weeks, and I can't say to why. I do know that HubTech, the, the town's technological services, have been working on different aspects of the town's server. Okay. Do you have any further questions in regards to the office? I do not, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you for that report, Lisa. You're welcome. Next, Mr. Fine, we had uh, for uh, regards to uh, upcoming issues. Did you see that? I see it. Okay. Um, I see that Mr. Thorne's here, and uh, one of the things that uh, we have is discussing uh, streamlining variance request approval procedure. Uh, first, I wanted to, you know, say thanks for coming. I know uh, you've been going through some personal things, so we appreciate you being here tonight. So um, if you don't have any information on that, that's fine, but if you do, we'll take yeah, I haven't had a chance to okay. talk to Lisa since we had that as a topic All right. before, so, uh, you know, when we get some time, um, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, in addition to uh, the second item that you had regarding the ponds, I'd be happy to share with the board um, the studies that were done by uh, Comprehensive Environmental Incorporated CEI that did uh, the studies of Furnace and, and Oldham and some of the recommendations that were made by the engineering firm that have been implemented by the town uh, over the years. Um, one of the things that we found out that it was uh, an, an urban legend when I first got here that um, septic systems were polluting the ponds. And after the evaluation by CEI of Furnace and Oldham, it was determined that it, it wasn't septic systems, but it was surface runoff from streets, um, animal waste. Um, uh, those are the items that, you know, would cause, you know, some of the problems that we've had in the ponds over the years. And what we've done is uh, we received a couple of grants from the 319 DEP program where we actually uh, installed 36 new catch basins uh, in and around the ponds uh, to eliminate some of the runoff from the streets uh, going into the ponds. And another thing that uh, we passed the bylaw several years ago where it, it was against the law to feed any animals. Uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, waterfowl. fowl, waterfowl, um, that was creating all that. So, um, you know, we've uh, done pretty much our part in, in addition to spending thousands of dollars every year uh, to treat the ponds. Um, we treat Oldham with uh, alum and we treat furnace with uh, copper sulfate. Um, the reason that we do two different kinds of treatments is that there's an endangered species in Oldham Pond called the Eastern Mussel. And uh, therefore we were, uh, actually we experimented with a, a, a chemical about four years ago that was very expensive. And uh, we were one of the first, maybe the only town in Mass Massachusetts to use that, uh, phycomycin. Uh, and uh, we finally got permission from DEP and uh, DPH to, uh, to use alum, which is uh, as effective, but uh, a lot cheaper than uh, the phycomycin was. So, uh, um, so anyway, you know, we continue to budget every year. Um, we spend about between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars to treat Habermas Furnace, Stetson, and uh, Little Sandy, if as needed, and uh, of course Oldham. Mr. Thune, when you t when you speak of runoff. Our, our member who was not present this evening, she had brought up an issue with concern about the use of fertilizers. Mm -hmm. I, so runoff being... Exactly. 
you know, everybody that's got the real pretty lawns that are on the ponds are, you know, culprits of that very thing. Understood. Um, you know, now they can they can buy a fertilizer that is uh, not harmful to the environment and harmful to you know our ponds. Um, whether they do that or not, I think that might be something that the Board of Health may want to look at. Okay. That. Uh, because that, that is a culprit. I mean, I think uh, any naturalist will tell you that the best scenario is to have, um, you know, a lot of vegetation at water's edge so that it acts as a screen. But a lot of people don't want that because they would rather have that nice lawn right up to, uh, you know, right up yeah. to the water's edge. So. And if you don't mind, I will sure. go next door. Thank you. Okay, so Speaking we look forward to working with you on those two items on our upcoming issues when I have a chance to talk to us. So when, you, when you say, I, I, before you go, on the first issue, streamlining variance request approval process, I've kind of been in the, I might be the only one in the anti-camp of that. Are you looking at drafting procedures? Is there something that you're writing from another, I'm not clear. No, we haven't had a chance, to, like I said, to talk to Lisa about what we think we could you we could do so i'm not saying we are we just haven't had a chance to sit down and look at some of the procedures that we have and see how that affects you know the board of health fair enough thanks okay. mr thorne thank you and uh, blast on that upcoming uh gary is just basically we it's a topic you had mentioned before when you were chair, I believe it's That's correct. Consider, you know, implementing a maximum number of livestock allowed on parcels less than one acre. So, uh, upcoming issues, it's just something we like to keep revisiting to talk, discuss, I would think, and uh, really see if we can come up with something. Mr. And chair, when I was acting chair, that, that was an issue that I wanted to raise and Quite frankly, the week that we were going to discuss it, my two fellow board members did not seem to be impassioned or up to the task. So I let it go, but I, I, I clearly, and I'm not making sport of you. No, I, that's fine. I, I think it's definitely something that you as chair should consider uh, putting on the agenda in the future, and we should we should look at it. I, I, res I, that I respect your opinion. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, our next uh, board meeting will be August 20th. Do you have anything further to add? I do not, Mr. Chair. So seeing that, I will take a motion to um, adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn our August 6th meeting at 7.05 p.m. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.